G'day comrades subscribers. So let's continue on with this US ZX81 uh, with the neat keyboard. So I finally got some new regulators from EZ SBC. Unfortunately, Daniel's included the headers. I asked him not to, uh, if he could leave the headers off so that I could um, basically mount these vertically. So I could probably try and desolder them, but I haven't had much luck. Doesn't seem to be too much solder. So the other thing I was thinking of is just taking off this the plastic and then curving it around like so. So I'll give that a go. Right, first part's done. I've removed the little channel select switch and I've installed a modern switching regulator. So the next thing to do will be to um, replace the um, RF modulator so we can try and get a composite signal and um, see if it works. So we've got 2K in here, which is the default. So I'll see if the 2K works. To get the 16K working, I'm going to have to um, maybe replace this with a DIN socket just so I can put in the plus minus 5 volts and the 12 volts uh, because the um, the official RAM pack uses the 9 volts from on the expansion connector to generate all the other voltages whereas here we um, we need them we need them uh, directly so let's do this next so uh, actually I might um, just to be a little safer Let's just remove, so this is the ROM. I do actually have a replacement ROM that I should really try out. Um, I like to replace these ceramic disc capacitors as well. I really do not like them. <laughs> Let's get the Z80 out. And then get the ULA out. So I think this is the 184. Yeah, 184, so that's got the missing uh, back porch signal, which sets the black, I think it sets the black level or something. Anyway, so, put the top of that. So what I like to do here is basically gut, gut the whole thing, and then just put in a simpler um, emitter follower uh, to, to buffer the output and um, yep yeah, so I'll just desolder here as well get this whole can off and um, rebuild it basically okay so that step's done I've uh, got all the solder out of the hole so it's all ready to go here's the can so I'll take off the bottom it looks pretty clean so I should just be able to uh, lift off the bottom like so. Like so. There we go. And look, I don't really care what's in here. Be careful of this because obviously we're going to reuse this. Um, so you can maybe snip the capacitor that's on there. Don't really care about these wires. I'm going to put new wires in. So I could probably just pull them through or just chop them off. Um, so yeah, I could be a bit violent if I want to, just to because uh, we've got some pretty heavy solder there, so it's going to require a bit of heat. But yeah, I'll be back once that's all done. And we're back finally. So end result, we've seen it before. So obviously you remember to don't lose that. That is the base. Where's the there? Goes through there like that. So, like there's a dozen ways of doing this. I just do this pretty simple way. That's on the Byte Delight website. Simple uh, emitter follower. So, like so. Pretty simple. So from Byte Delight, 
Thank you very much. So let me just wire this up. So we've got nice clean modulator can. Just run some wires in. You can probably run wire, wire in for ground as well, but you can just use the, the chassis as well. So you usually can run the nice thin wire in. So one in for signal, one in for five volts. And um, yeah, so I've got my transistor ready to go. So let me get it all set up. Right. First part's done. So that's the uh, that's the base, which will take the uh, the video signal from pin 16 of the ULA. And um, so this one just needs five volts, and then this one's um, where we do the biasing, 100 ohms to ground, and then. It says 18 or 33 ohms, depending on the brightness. I normally put 33 ohms, I think. So we'll just give that a try, see what we get. And there we go. So that's generally kind of what I do. Five volts, video signal, or pin 16, and ground, and then video output. So here we go. And I know there's dozens of different ways of doing it. So this is just one way of doing it that's kind of quick and easy. So let me uh, get it installed. Um, see, I might um, just put some uh, heat shrink over those as well. Um, yeah. All right, done. So not the neatest. I could have made the, the wires a bit shorter. Could have made these wires a bit shorter as well. But um, that's, yeah, just enough to see if it's going to... If it's going to work so let me get the get a power cable put the uh, chips back in and um, yeah see if it's working so apparently ntsc versus pal is determined by resistor r30 so yeah so r30 is there so it should output ntsc if r30 was missing then it should output pal no real difference apart from the size of the border, apparently. So it's a it's a ZX eighty it's a US ZX eighty one. So we'll keep it as NTSC. Okie dokie, everything's back ready to go. Let's have a look at the screen. Hey, it's working. Oh, there we go. <laughs> So, yep, it's working. Uh, let me just power it off again. Connect up this keyboard. Let's see how well this keyboard goes. Um, okay, so, keyboard is connected. Let's power her on. Hmm, looks good. So, uh, print. Oh, this is nice. Nice keyboard. Um, okay, it was... Uh, is it shift like that? There we go. Test. Oh, this keyboard is working really nice. This is, this is cool. Okay, so basic machine's working. Uh, I assume 2Ks works. Uh, yeah, it's a bit dodgy output. <laughs> it's not in a case. Oh. Doesn't help having that shorting the board. Okay. Right. Um, so what is it? So uh, a number takes five bytes. Is it? So five bytes. So if we dimension array, um, let's say, say two K, so one is a 200. So say uh, 250. So if we do dim 250, maybe dim. A, I like this keyboard. This is really a say 250. So that seems to work. So 250. So that's over OK. So 2K should be working as well. So ULA is getting hot. <laughs> Z80 is getting hot. ROM's getting hot. <laughs> All right. Really needs to go back into a case. OK. So that's all for now. Next thing up will be trying out the, the 16K. So I need to screw it all back together and um, 
replace, well, the um, that's the voltage in, obviously, plus minus 5 volts, ground, and plus 12 volts. Is that connected there, which I don't have? <laughs> so I'll need, I'm thinking of maybe just a DIN, uh, DIN socket or something. So, yep, and then we'll see if this, um, this homemade 16K expansion works. That'll be interesting. Okay, so far so good. Um, I do like this keyboard. This is a, this is a really nice, really nice keyboard. So, okay, bye for now.